And hello and welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel 3. And yes, sorry, I just want to make sure everything is recording. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. Okay, last time we uh, got into chapter 3. Now I'm headed back to the dorm. Looks like the sun is about to set. Should I head back to the dorm now? Oh, and there was... Oh, shoot, that was something I was planning to do. Give me a sec. And up. Ah, uh, okay. Well, this is the thing that I was told about, I guess. Okay. I did not even think of the possibility that there'd be something over here in, uh, back in chapter two. So, yeah. I. That was four. So, I guess at a point, I'll basically go in. Maybe when I get the next one, I'll, um, and I have the one after it, I'll go and read the one before it as well. I'm sure there's some record of it online, too, if absolutely necessary. That's, um, that's my bad. I'm not really in a good place to go and just, you know, fight the boss of the game. Or fi fight the boss of the chapter again, so. Just in order to have that. So, yeah. That's, uh, my bad. I missed that. Didn't think of it. Uh, some people pointed it out after the point I had finished chapter two, so yeah. I do record ahead. That is just as an FYI. Uh, the episodes, because they go up three times a week, I'm a little bit uh, with a bit less content per than the normal if I did it two times a week, uh, means that it may seem... Yeah, realistically, I'll be in a similar place ahead, but it varies from me being like a couple episodes ahead to being like, because it's uh, three a week instead of two a week, like maybe six, nine episodes ahead uh, at like probably the most. So yeah, if we're like currently, uh, the next episode that goes up should basically introduce Oliver at this point. So I'm a little bit ahead. So I'll see you all back in uh, chapter three. So, uh, yeah, my bad. Hello, Reen. I see you're on your way back, too. Hmm. Hey there, Toa, Celine. This is significant enough to get voices? <laughs> you two together is quite the rare sight. <laughs> I suppose it is now that you mention it. I guess so. It took quite some effort on her part to convince everyone to let a talking cat stay here. Ah, uh, you're just being open about it now, aren't you? Okay, you just told everyone that you're a cat. I see. Thank you for taking the time to do all that. It didn't take any time. Just had to do a few quick chats with people at the campus and in town. Just make sure you don't let any visitors catch you talking, okay, Celine? Yeah, yeah, I know that. I've been hiding myself with Emma for years now. I wouldn't make such an amateurish. And turn around. Holy crap, a talking cat! <gasps> oh, is that a... Is that a lease? Wait a second. Um... <laughs> oh, hey, uh, George. I know you weren't expecting me, Reen. Good day to you, Toa. Celine. <laughs> also, yeah, he's messing. Because he was with us previously, right? He know. He know. I think. Elise! And is that... <laughs> Sorry about that. Looks like I got you good. George Gnome, who they introduced right after introducing the gnomes to the game. George! Am I not supposed... Like, they're trying to make me suspicious. Okay, whatever. Long time no see, Toa. And how's it hanging, Reen? Celine? It does feel like it's so obvious that it's... It's so obvious that it feels like it's a red herring, but yeah. I happened to run into your sister on the train from Heimdall. And what brings you out here? I don't even... Is that the same voice he had? 
It sounds familiar, but it's been a while and he was a minor character, admittedly. Hmm. Are you taller than him now? Okay. Oh, is it gonna be George, Randy, Toen, Reen? Oh no. No, Elise, I forgot she was here. I already forgot she was here. Oh my goodness. Let's take a quick swig of some, you know, beer in front of her. <laughs> Let's show her our newfound, um, <laughs> maturity? <laughs> I see. So you came to bring me letters from Father and Master. Yes, they arrived around noon, so I figured I should give them to you right away. You could have just sent them to me. Also, wait, they arrived around, so like, at your school? Why would they be sent to your school? Hmm. I figured I could go back today, so I just decided to come. I had planned to just come and go, but... No, I won't allow this. Oh, come on, Tawa. Let her do it. Let her do it. Last return train leaves at 10. A girl like you cannot go alone. We have guest rooms in the dorm, so please stay here tonight. But... Is it... Okay. Uh, I guess then... Yeah, she'd get there and it would be in the middle of Heimdall. She's headed, uh, presumably, back to the... I suppose we are pretty close to Heimdall, which is relatively close to her school. So it's not that much of a trip. It was enough so that, yeah, yeah, we're pretty close. We're in the suburbs, essentially. So we, she really should, oh, well, we should really just be a bit of a skip over here, and it should be a very short trip, but yeah. Yeah, I insist, too. Tomorrow's Sunday. I hope you didn't have any plans. Well, that won't be a problem. Fine, I'll take you up on that offer. After all, I do want to meet, uh, meet everyone at the branch campus. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get permission from the principal. Sorry, and thank you. I'm surprised to see you, but... I didn't think that fat mechanic would be coming, too. Yeah, I haven't seen him in a year. He's gonna come over here after he sees the professor, right? Yeah, he said we can order whatever we like. George has a hefty appetite, so we can probably order everything on the menu. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha you might be right. That may be too much. But I was really surprised to see him on the train. He told me he spent this past year traveling all over the continent. Really? Okay. Yeah, he's making his rounds to all the famous studios in the countries. Sai Central Factory in the Burrow, the Epstein Foundation in the Man. He said he used his connections to also get to the Vern Company in the Republic. The Republic? Isn't that the big country who's at war with the Empire? Yeah, though they have reached an armistice. George was always an advocate for peace through technological uh, exchange. But he and Angelica are really uh, setting really good examples. Okay. Isn't Angelica traveling the continent on an orbital bike? Okay. Yeah, I think she might be coming back soon. Okay, then we'll see her next chapter, I assume. Hey guys, sorry for making you wait. George! Please have a seat. We'll make a toast. <laughs> That's right, you're old enough to drink now. I I, I can drink too. I'll just have the ginger ale. And I'll have milk. Alcoholic milk. Is there such thing as alcoholic milk? 
There probably is. There probably is something that's alcoholic in milk, technically. I heard the rumors about seeing what happened to Crossbow. The society's on the move again. And that group called the Gnomes. Yeah. Why is your last name Gnome? I know it doesn't have the G, but still. Or is no one gonna bring that up? Right. Green, Miss Toa. Yeah, that surprised me too. In my head, I I know it's impossible. We went to his funeral after the war. We were there when they buried him. Okay, so it was open casket. Okay. Yeah, he was resting so peacefully. He looked unusually content, you know, for crow. So, uh, so, uh, for some reason, it just seems like it was just yesterday. But you're right, we know for certain that masked man absolutely cannot be Crow. Yeah. In fact, that shadowy machine may not have been a divine knight. It could have just been something that looks like one. Speaking of which, was the Azure Knight ever retrieved? I heard that they sealed up so the Noble Alliance wouldn't get their hands on it. Yeah, it's being stored in the depths of Grelly Fortress. Okay, we could go check that out. Now that crow is no longer alive, it shouldn't be able to teleport. So, it must have been something else. Okay, so it's totally... Okay. I mean, I'm still fairly convinced that it's gotta be a Swords Ritter style thing. It's even dressed up like the Swords Ritter. Yeah. Then again, I know we're not in Phantasmagoria. Then again, we could be in a Phantasmagoria if we go back to my theory of everything. <laughs> You know. Actually, you could probably explain it with my theory of everything, but you know, a bit of a theological jumps. A small part of me was hoping it really was the night. Yeah. Anyway, the gnomes are piquing my interest, are they now? They were the counterparts of the witches, but the they vanished into the dark recesses of history. They made the spirit shrines and even created the basement of the old campus. I heard that the last time they clashed with the witches was about 800 years ago. That was the last exchange between the two groups. Supposedly, no one has seen the gnomes since then. And they just happened to choose today to return. They're going up to the society. And they've hired Zephyr. So it seems. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on. I'm sure the Elder of Vita would know more about this. Well, Vita, definitely. Didn't you already ask the Elder? But she said she wouldn't tell you anything. Well, she can be really stubborn sometimes. Jeez, despite looking like that, she can be such a stubborn hag. Looking like that. Oh, don't worry about it. Hmm. Uh, hey, Rain. Do you have any thoughts about the gnomes? <laughs> Do you, George? Are you talking about the society or your family? I'm not going to let that go until someone brings it up. Come on. What makes you think I know anything about them? Well, I did back you and Class 7 up in battle once. I'd like to think that I know about the information you gathered during the Civil War. And under that assumption, I came up with a theory. The group known as Gnomes, could they be calling themselves something else now? Oh, that's a fair point. That would be a pretty good way to, like, you know, stay undercover. That's... I've only heard bits and pieces, but... I was actually thinking that, too. Over the last few months, my suspicions have grown. The name the gnomes are using now is... No... Oh. Oh! Oh... Wait. Um. Hmm. Interesting thought. I, I was gonna say gnomes with like without a G. <laughs> I was gonna say the name they're using now is not gnomes, but gnomes. I mean RF group. No, or this no. Here, the only option E really is. 
it's not the RF group. Though, then again, I suppose that would be interesting. The Black Workshop. They're in the mysterious workshop that created Millie and Minotina's combat shells. I've also heard rumors about them selling extremely high-tech weapons to first class, uh, Jaeger cores. So... Probably. A sort of long-range rifle that Grow used may have been one of them. Same with Altina's combat shell that abducted me and the princess. You know, Tina and Millium themselves. Yeah, although they erased all memories. Uh, all of uh, Millium and Altina's memories of the workshop. No one has seen their true face. <laughs> okay. I don't know, just when you said that, it's like... George! <laughs> uh... Oh my goodness. I swear to goodness, if they do a reveal at some point where they bring up his name, and it's like, George Gnome, they take away the orange part, like all but the G in George, and they just like move it to the beginning of Gnome. <laughs> oh my goodness, I want them to do that. Again, it's so obvious it feels like a red herring, but they're also, no one's bringing it the fuck up at all. Uh... Except for Chancellor Osborne and Ouroboros. Oh, uh... No one has seen the true face. Okay. Oh. And I suppose we've seen the crow-looking motherfucker. And everything has come full circle. Because it's like, they're not bringing this up, and I, I figured... Well, I guess it's not that surprising they're not bringing it up, but it's the same sort of vein. It's like, I thought they wouldn't recognize Crow at first. Like, everyone's recognizing him, but I thought they'd be like, Hmm, who's that? But then everyone is just like, the fuck, guys? That's Crow! And everything has come full circle. Uh, and it's, uh, According to Vita, the Black Workshop was part of the Society's 13 factories. Mm, this is what I've learned during my recent travels. 13 factories are like a network that gathers technicians from all over the continent. But during the Civil War, they sided with the Chancellor and helped him steal the plan from the Society. Yeah, that makes sense. So, the key to all this is Chancellor Osborne. So, interesting. So, presumably, it's basically... They recruit people to their cause, uh, share tech and whatnot, and are run through what's-his-face, that anguish with Ouroboros. Presumably, with each of them having their own personal head, it's more like... 13 different s relatively small workshops for all intents and purposes. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that someone we can just talk to? Can I? Could I just, like, go to his, like, place and be like, yeah, I need to talk. Tell me everything. Would I be willing to do that? Could I do that? Rain. Rain. Huh? What is it? It's nothing. I don't want to make them worry. Thank you. I think I have a better idea of how this all how all this information fits together. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm interested in the Black Workshop too. I think the professor might know something. The professor. Uh that makes sense. He is regarded as the most prestigious engineer on the continent. I was planning on staying in his lab tonight and helping him. Oh, Professor Schmidt. Okay. I'm leaving for Rover tomorrow, but I'm sure I'll be sure to bring it up with him. I'll let you know if I learn anything new, Reen. Thank you. I feel like he'll be more open with you. Yeah. That old man has issues. Hard to disagree with that. Okay. Well then, now I'll see you guys around. I'll make sure to drop in and say bye before I leave tomorrow. Yeah, he should give me a call sometime too. He definitely grew tall. Like, yeah. Good evening. How about we get together tomorrow and uh, have lunch? It sounds good to me. See you tomorrow. That said, I'll probably end up pulling all nighter tonight. You can sleep on the train. Don't worry. Oh, there you are, says. Oh. Hey, buddies. Uh, Yuna, Atina, you say. And look, even Tina's here. 
All oh, right, I haven't said hello to anyone besides um, you say yeah. Good to see you, Yuna. It's been a while. You as well, Tina. Tina. Yeah, good to see you too. It's only been 19 days since we last met. <laughs> I, was supposed, I was surprised when I heard from George. Well, I seized myself earlier as to not intrude. But when I told Yuna and Tina you were here, they insisted upon coming, to by, uh, coming by to say hello. Well, yeah, we promised we'd all get together. And you, Instructor, why didn't you invite me? Oh, uh, yeah, now that uh, you mentioned it, I probably should have. No, it's my fault. I should have let you all know I'd be stopping by. No, no, you've got nothing to apologize for, at least your brother on the other hand. But hey, aren't you headed to Heimdall? Last train's going to leave soon, isn't it? Well, about that. At least we'll be spending tonight at Storms. What? For real? Yay! <laughs> I suspected that might be the case. We'd perhaps be sending the night locked away with Instructor Reen in his room. Absolutely not! I mean, just like, why would she do that? We have plenty of extra rooms. She'll be staying in the guest room tonight. I checked with the principal earlier, and in her words, at least can stay as many nights as she pleases. She would say that. Oh, and then in that case, Elise, instead of some boring old guest room, why don't you stay with us? Huh. Fine with that, right, Ellie? No objections. Commence. <laughs> Commence pajama party. She brings, she brings out her doll. <laughs> it's like, oh no, I can't even finish that thought in a good, satisfying way. Sorry. It's a funny thought, though. No, no, no. She saved Tina and me. After all, I was her underclassman at Saint Shreya. Have you brought that up with them? Okay. Oh yes, I'd be more than happy to have her stay with us. This is getting way too noisy. If this keeps going, I'll, I'll, they'll tear her in two. Well, such is life, you know? Um. Well, since you've got the opportunity, why not take them up on the offer, at least? <laughs> I agree, but as a teacher, I recommend you don't stay up too late. Well, in that case, all she can pick. I would love to join you all for the night. They have rooms that are pretty close to each other, so... They could just, like, put up a little corridor between them, yeah? <laughs> hmm. Yep, not really too spectacular. <laughs> Looks like you've kept this place clean. Though the building itself may be old, everything inside is well organized. Well, I'm sure you can thank Celestine for that, of all people. You don't have to go through the job of cleaning my room, though. I can take care of it myself. There's so much dust on this fishing rod. Yes, I can tell. However, the hard-to-reach spots could use some attention. Ah-ha-ha-ha-ha. Uh, well, you know, I've been pretty busy, you know? <laughs> oh, I know. Don't worry, I'll give your room a thorough cleaning tomorrow. There should be no problems, provided I get back by evening. Uh, are you also gonna wash my underwear? No, I couldn't possibly ask that of you. Since you came to visit, I should show you around. Knowing you, you'll be working even on your off days, am I right? I don't intend to get in the way of you helping out your school or your students. I came to visit and volunteered to help out of my own free will, so please go about your business as usual. Please. Fine, you mean. But we're eating breakfast and lunch together at least. I will not let you get out of that. <laughs> I accept your conditions. Oh, and Reen, here are the letters from Father and Master Yoon. Oh, right. Uh, thanks for bringing those to me. I guess, yeah, they would have been letters that you got in Heimdall and... For some reason weren't, like, sent to me. I have been living here for a while. I guess Master came back to visit while I was away in Crossbell, hmm? I would have liked to see him, but... 
I guess that's how it was meant to be. But why didn't Dad just send these directly to me? Those letters weren't sent to me through the post office, but a shipping company. Perhaps he did it for your sake. I see. You think that they would have just... I guess, yeah, if they went through the normal postage, then maybe they would have been like... Then maybe they would have been like, oh, these are just serene. Chancellor says like, open them, read them, seal them again. Didn't he do that in case the letters were inspected? That means that there's sensitive information in them. Hmm, interesting thought. Could have had them shipped here, too. Um, Reen? Did something happen between you and father? Oh, no. Why do you ask? Do you know about the Chancellor and me? Who knows? When I don't you came know. home at the end of last year. Because there's the whole thing where it's like, the people there, they know. I'm sure they know. But most of them are pretty trustworthy and probably wouldn't tell people. So, it's basically Reen to tell everyone else. I don't think at least was... Yeah, at least wasn't there up at the top. I wonder if Altina here would know. No, yeah, Altina would know. She was there, yeah. I'm trying to remember everyone who's there. There seemed to be something off between the two of you. Well, when you learn that they're not your actual... Well, I guess he already knew that he wasn't his actual father, but, you know, when you start having daddy issues, then the adoptive father is probably going to get a little bit of that. I can't imagine what it might be, but... Did something happen at the end of the Civil War? And could that something have led to a rift between you and father? I'm glad to finally see you again, my son. You've grown into a fine young man. Indeed, the Empire will soon know of the Ashen Chevalier, the hero whose brave deeds allowed us to reclaim the capital. There's no need to worry. We're not fighting or anything. I'm still Dad's beloved son. And him, Mom, and you are all my family. Mind you. I I know he's gotten, like, since that time when the rift, at least, had started. Like, the recent information about uh, his father potentially knowing who his actual father was. Nothing will ever change then. Right. All done, getting ready for your sleepover. Huh? Uh, uh, excuse us? Everyone! Uh, <laughs> uh, we just finished getting the bed all set up. I went and brought back some extra pajamas, too. Oh? Because I've sensed your presence there for quite some time now. Oh. Um, told you he sensed us. Oh, don't act like you weren't just as curious as the rest of us, Altina. The Shores are siblings alone together. A forbidden delight sweeter than the finest confection. Musi! Ah, oh, that's it! It's been so long since you've scolded me like that, Elise! <laughs> oh my... You're all making way too much racket. Don't go around shouting in the halls. I'm trying to take a cat nap here and... Ow! What do you think you're doing? <laughs> you should join us, Celine. There are so many things I need to ask you. Good thinking. I'm sure Celine has plenty of juicy details about our instructor's school days. Why is this the main subject? Juicy details? Oh, <laughs> we're gonna have so much fun tonight. Oh no. Well, on that note, good night, Rain. Yep, yeah, good night. Try not to stay up too late. And... 
basically every other girl. Okay. Ah, I could not believe what an angel instructor needs this guy is. Her uniform is similarly perfect and she's just so... Pure! She's the student council president at St. Estrella's Girls School, right? I wonder if she can teach me about manliness. Here, go talk to her. <laughs> Put that obnoxiously handsome face of yours to work and ask her if we can join too. Come on. <laughs> so out of place with that hat and such. I refuse. I refuse. You guys do know that tomorrow is our free day. Right. <laughs> so that's Wars' sister, huh? But I guess they aren't blood related. But if that's the case, then. Dear Reen, it has been some time. Last I laid eyes on you was before you left for the academy. So, two years ago. Teo, uh, Teo, Teo, I forgot. Teo showed me a recent. Well, yeah, not Teo. We have it, Teo. Teo showed me a recent picture of you, and I could tell at a glance you've shown. Uh, you've grown into a fine young man. I've no doubt you've hit your hit among the ladies, but knowing you, that popularity, uh, popularity is completely going. Oh my goodness, I can't speak. That seems to be a theme lately. That popularity is going completely to waste. Truth be told, I must journey to the eastern half of the continent. Its blight grows worse by the day. The dragon veins are nearly depleted, and the barren land spreads. It is a world wholly different from the west. Dragon veins depleted. Hmm, that's an interesting bit of information. I shan't return to West, uh, Western Sumeria for at least half a year. I would have liked to see you before I left, but I suppose this is Adios' whim. I hear you earned yourself the title of the Ashen Chevalier for your deeds in the Empire Civil War. I'm sure there are many things which cause you hesitation and disquiet your heart. The power within you that led you to seek my training, the mysterious, the mystery of your birth, your past, but you needn't worry over such things. The knowledge I passed down to you was that of the seventh form, the blade that brings a flash of light to drive back the darkness. Mastering this form is more difficult than any other. I do not know if you are even capable of such a feat yet. Ten years ago, it was you I chose to be my final disciple. Not Cassius, not Arios. I chose you, and you alone to be the final blade to complete the eight leaves. So what, he had one disciple perform, basically? Eh, that's an interesting thought. In this time of turbulence, Become the flashing blade which illuminates the darkness, even if for the briefest moment. I believe you, and those comrades whose souls are intertwined with yours are capable of this. Goodbye for now. Once I have returned from the east and we have reunited, I shall impart to you my final teachings. Yun, if I... <laughs> How does he always do that? He writes as though he knows everything I've done and sees right through me. He's in Samaria, though. In recent years, it's grown barren and there's less and less fertile land to go around. I'm sure Master doesn't need me to worry about him. No, it's not my place to worry about him. The seventh form is a void, emptiness, darkness. Yet it's also a blade that brings a flash of light to illuminate the darkness. He's always told me that, but I think I'm finally starting to understand. I think it's a bit too much to call me the final blade to complete the eight leaves. But at the very least, I want to be strong enough to protect my friends and students. In order to do that, I need to overcome this wall. And I've also got this letter from Dad. A letter he needed at least to hand deliver to me. Hmm. Dear Reen. It's been a while since we last talked, huh? About six months or so, I guess. Judging from your last letter, you seem to be well. I'm sure at least mentioned it, but Master Kafai visited Emer in late May. He left a letter to you, so I sent it to Elise via a reliable source so we, uh, she could deliver it to you in person. I'd also like to tell you that which I promised I would. I mentioned by now you know about your birth father. Okay, so he knows, basically. 
At least had her suspicions, but your mother and I mutely knew there was something. Uh, something was amiss when you last visited. First off, I need to apologize for not telling you sooner. I've known Gileath Osborne for about 40 years. His family were commoners from the north, but his father and mine were acquainted. When he lost his family to an avalanche, we took him in. He was 13 years old at the time. Really? So, like, so your father took him in and what, was he like a brother to you? I was only five then, so I looked up to him as an older brother. Once he was 17, he left Hemer and enrolled at the wars. After his graduation, he joined the army and was promoted at a remarkable rate. Because of this, the nobles took notice and tried to quash his rise through said ranks. Even after my father passed on and I took over Emer, Gilead continued to keep in contact. Until that day 14 years ago. It had been three years since I'd heard his voice. I want you to take in a child. You must cut all ties with me and never speak a word of this to that child. I'm sorry, Teo. You're the only one I can turn to. I accepted his request and immediately took a horse out to the place he told me. The rest, you should know. The moment I saw the child, I knew it was his. I knew Gilead was married and had a child I'd even seen pictures. But seeing the child up close, he resembled his mother more than anything. Really? Oh, my bad. Sorry, hit up. My... Hmm. So that means... That means he knows Reen's mother. Even so, I chose to forget all that and take that child in as a member of the Swarzer family. Fortunately, Lucia agreed and Elise warmed up to him in no time. Well, Elise would have been even younger than Rain at that point. From then on, it all felt like a wondrous dream. That child grew up into a man any parent would be proud of. Of course, Elise was proud of her dear older brother as well. I knew he worried about the mysterious power deep within him, but he studied under Master Yoon in order to get it under control. We, his parents and his sister, will always be proud of him. He is an irreplaceable member of our family. Much has changed since then. Yes, I know he is still the same young man we all love. My older brother Gilead was kind and dependable, and I know he would not have left his child were there any other choice. That said, I refuse to give you back to him. Even if it comes down to a bare knuckle brawl between us, even if I have no other chance of winning, I will never let you go. Above all, I want to make sure you knew this. That is why I wrote you today. Sorry you took me such a long letter to say. Say hi to Elise for me. Sincerely, Dad. I, I like there. I remember that scene at the end of Cold Steel 2 when they had like the big hug and whatnot. I am so blessed to have such a wonderful family and friends. And on top of that, now I get to have great co workers and students. But I need to not but I need to make sure I'm not over relying on them. You must know something about my powers what really happened that day 14 years ago. What happened to my birth mother? P.S. He did contact me just once after the incident. Though it was simply as a request from the Imperial Chancellor to a local Baron. 12 years ago, he asked for me to introduce him to a young noble from the Alberea family to whom I was teaching falconry at the time. In retrospect, I feel my introduction to him was a prelude to recent events such as the Civil War and the occupation of Crossbell. It's possible this isn't relevant, but I thought I'd let you know anyway. Just, you know, put everything into context. Or of ours, the Black Workshop, the Enforcers, the Jaegers, the Gnomes, and that mass man. Oh my goodness. We have so many characters and so many organizations and so many and every... The world's a big place, guys. And the Iron Bloods he founded. I'm seeing more of the big picture little by little, but the truth is still shrouded in darkness. Perfect for my seventh form, right? 
You need to light the way, Reen Swarzer. Be the shining blade that cuts through the darkness. 